this game matter in the state of Arizona, the Pac-12 South, but perhaps the country, trying to get to 10 wins, possibly to a Fiesta Bowl, maybe even more, as Arizona meets Arizona State. We are live here on Fox. make their way on the field. This Arizona team gets it done with a stingy defense, bringing back echoes from Desert Swarm and a high-octane run offense under Rodriguez. Their counterparts from Arizona State rely heavily on a multifaceted offense with running backs that can both run it as well as catch it and a high-risk, high-reward defense. It's number 11 against number 13 with a Pac-12 South championship possibly at stake. Todd Graham made his way from Tulsa to Pittsburgh, and now in his third season, he brings back the Frank Cush look to Tucson. What a joy it is for us to spend our Thanksgiving holiday with you. Hello, everyone. Tim Brando. By my side, Joel Klatt. Simply put, the outcome of this game impacts throughout the rest of the season. Here's what I love about this game is that both of these programs and both of these coaches make no bones about it. There's no cliches about the next game being the most important. They say for 365 days a year that this game is <laughs> yeah. the biggest on their schedule. The next three hours are going to be something very special. 600 miles west of here, they care deeply about the outcome. Inside this stadium, no one will know that's playing, but we'll keep you abreast if you're watching. Arizona, Arizona State, the kick is next. this week how important this game was maybe the most important of the year how are you going to come away with the win today oh well it's the most important game every year uh, to our fans and to our fan base this is this is it doesn't get any bigger than this and uh, how we're going to win today is play sun devil football that means uh, class character and toughness and and stay together figure out somehow some way to win obviously two very very good football teams uh, playing for their 10th win and i believe for the pac 12 south championship so it'll be a great one thanks for your time good luck tonight all right go devils Coach Graham and Coach Rodriguez were hired back in 2012. This is the third time they've met in this Territorial Cup showdown. Coach Graham currently has the upper hand with ASU winning the last two. Three of the last four, in fact. Thank you, Jenny. Rich Rod, well aware of that step. Casey Scouring will boot it away. ASU won the toss, selected to receive. DeAndre Lewis is back deep. All the way through the end zone for a touchback. And uh, what are the three things that we need to know, Joel Klatt, when Arizona State has the football? First is D.J. Foster. He's the catalyst to the offense. Very versatile player. Line up as a wide receiver and a running back. He's a terrific talent. Second is they start fast and they finish even faster. They've outscored their opponents 96 to 44 in the first quarter. And Scooby Wright on the defensive side, one of the best players in the country. Excellent instincts and football IQ. He's going to have to play very big today against D.J. Foster in this Sun Devils offense. The freshman, Demario Richard, dots the eye, trips to the top of your screen. That's Cam Smith wide to the top of your screen. And it's Richard that takes it first, and he's nailed at the point of attack. Taylor Kelly missed three games earlier this year, has a pin in his right foot. You see the touchdown to interception ratio. He's just such a leader for this team. They knew they had to go back to him. Mike Ber Berkovich, he played great in those three games, but this is Taylor Kelly's team. He set a gain of a yard, so it's second down and nine. Play fake to Richard. And off the rollout action, well defended by guess who's defensively DJ Foster, the intended receiver. Jared Tevis there in coverage, number 38. 
Tevis, a walk on to safety, and here comes the crowd on third down. Tevis has 100 tackles, second only to Scooby Wright. Third and nine. They don't have a lot of third down chances, Arizona State. The conversion rate, as illustrated, not the best. Strong was in motion. Kelly, backside pressure. It's on the ground. Picked up by Arizona. All the way to the house. It's a touchdown. Anthony Lopez, the safety, comes out with it. It was Scooby Wright with some Scooby snacks to slap it away. Scouring with the extra point. 25 yards will call the fumble recovery and touchdown. And this is an Arizona team that has turned over the opposition 11 times in the last three games, and they open today's Territorial Cup matchup, the 88th renewal, with this. You got to feel it. Scooby's always around. 7-0. Seven to nothing, Arizona is a third string safety. Anthony Lopez scoops up a Scooby Wright forced fumble and takes it to the house. DeAndre Lewis and Middlebrooks back deep, and again, this one will sail all the way through the end zone for the touchback. And Joel, let's get our K Jewelers keys to the game. Well, one would be don't allow a defensive touchdown of the first series, but we'll start with Arizona State. They got to get Jalen Strong involved early in this game. He did not play last week against Washington State with concussion symptoms. He's a terrific talent and an explosive play player. For Arizona, it's the health of their quarterback, Anu Solomon. He's going to go with that strained arch in his right foot, but we'll see how dynamic he is outside of the pocket. Foster and Richard in the backfield. And on the read, Taylor Kelly keeps it and gets out ahead to the 30-yard line for a gain of five. Second down and five coming up. What an important series for Taylor Kelly and the Sun Devils here just to calm themselves down in the emotion of this rivalry game. Since Kelly returned from his injury, he has not been as prone to run the football. And the lack of his running the football has impacted what this Arizona State offense has really looked like. And we've got a pre-snap flag. Procedure, a false start, the preliminary indication. Tim, these rivalry games... They're filled with emotion and pressure. And it's usually the first offense that can get themselves out of the emotion and pressure and into the execution of the details of the system that's going to have more success because the defense can feed off of the emotion and just run around and hit people. But it's very tough for an offense. Well, let's see if Arizona State can get out of that twilight zone they're in. Richard on the stretch play trying to cut it back. Reggie Gilbert, 84, makes the tackle, the senior. Fairfax High School, Levine, Arizona. This is when you need Jalen Strong. He's their best player on the outside. He's 6'3". He's a physical mismatch against Arizona's corners, and 74% of his catches have gone for first downs or touchdowns. They need to look to number 21. DeAndre Lewis is uh, checked in in the backfield. Foster, of course, an outstanding receiver on checkdowns. They give it to Lewis. Crossed up, Arizona. Down the sideline and past midfield for a first down. Gutsy call from Mike Norvell. Watch as they're going to pull the offensive line around the edge. And it's great patience from the running back. Richard, just a freshman. Or excuse me. 
quick screen to Cameron Smith down to the 42 yard line. It was Lewis, as you called, but it was great patience waiting for that edge to allow those offensive linemen to get it around and hook the edge players and allowed for that last first down. William Parks made the stop. You know, you talk about key guys defensively, Longino being the one for Arizona State. William Parks has been that guy for defensive coordinator Jeff Castile here in Arizona. Second down and three. Kelly keeping it this time. Wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. That's Bondurant, 21, Tremaine Bondurant, who had such a big play last week against Utah. Yeah, Rich Rodriguez is famous for this style of defense. It's the 3-3-5 three, three, scheme, but you have to have versatile safeties that can go down and rush the passer, and Tremaine Bondurant is one of those players. He had 10 tackles last week, a big strip in that matchup as they blew out the Utes at home. Lewis remains the setback. On the slant, strong, incomplete. Airmailed it a bit. He was right at the line to make. Brandon there covering. You know, when you're throwing the ball over the middle, you've got to frame them up. The ball's got to hit them between the numbers because as soon as the wide receiver is outstretched, that gives the safety a target to go in there. And Jordan Grandin comes in with a big hit. Grandin, redshirt senior, one of the 19 honored. Gonna get a timeout here from Arizona. Yeah, on fourth down, I think there was some concern as to whether. Timeout, Arizona. That's their first charge out of the halves. This will be a full timeout. Whether they were going to go for it, make sure they had the right team out there. As a result, we'll be back. Fox College Football is sponsored by Dell. Remarkable view here in the backdrop of the Catalina Mountains. And on fourth down now, Arizona State chooses to punt the ball away. Devontae Neal is back deep. Matt Hawk will punt it away. Yeah, this is the right decision from Todd Graham. That Arizona timeout saved him there because with a defensive score already on the board at 7 0, the last thing you want to do is give him great field position. Pooch it and go end over end. And the fair catch taken by Neal at the 17. Now let's get back to our studios in Pasadena. We've got some action. And in Los Angeles, Cole Wright has this Lowe's Never Stop Improving game break. Thank you, guys. We'll head to the Rose Bowl, Stanford, UCLA. Early going to this one, first quarter, Brett Hundley and Thomas Duarte on the same page. 15-yard Bruin touchdown on their first series. Not too shabby. 7-zip UCLA. Tim and Joel, we'll send it back out to you. Anu Solomon making his way onto the field for the first time. Thank you, Cole. And uh, no, no one inside this stadium will be getting UCLA updates. But we'll keep you posted at home as to the importance of that matchup and the impact of this one on that one from here. As you see Nick Wilson taking it ahead. Salamo Fiso making the stop. Second and ten, no game. Play fake, and Solomon spun down again near the line of scrimmage. So it's a very active Arizona State defense, and that's Longino, the man for whom Joel Klatt mentioned at the top of the show, who's moved to that Will linebacker spot. Well, and, and Otto Solomon, here's the question, right? How elusive can he be on that sprained right arch in that right foot? 292 yards passing per game. He's had a Terrific freshman year, but battling that foot injury today. Sun Devils with that high energy 3 3 stack defense. Love to blitz in these situations, and here they come. Solomon is in trouble. Down at the three. Armand Perry, 13, coming from the corner cat. Here he comes here. Here they're coming around this age. It's an all-out blitz from Arizona State. Cover zero in the back end means no safety. Man-to-man -man across the board. That ball has got to leave Anu Solomon's hand very quickly if he wants to sit in the pocket and deliver it down the field. Advantage Sun Devils as Drew Riggleman punts it away. 
Well, that was really shanked. It'll be up to the Wildcats and their defense to get the job done here. As Arizona State will have magnificent field position. Scooby Wright, who's authored some of the greatest plays defensively of this season, has already impacted this game with a touchdown forced with a fumble picked up by Lopez and returned. You know, that, that's the exact reason that last punt of why Arizona State should have done exactly what they did, which was punt the ball away, because look what the defense has just yep. set up for their offense. Excellent field position starting this drive at the 28-yard line. Only the fourth drive all year that an opponent has started in Arizona territory. Foster. Short, choppy steps. He has tremendous vision, and uh, no one's better at coming out of the backfield and catching passes and beating you both from the air as well as on the ground. I love versatile players, and that's what today's game is all about, both defensively and offensively. D.J. Foster, the only man in America with 900 yards rushing and 500 yards receiving in this season. For the corner and strong, incomplete, down around the two-yard line. Well covered. William Parks was with him. Parks is another one of those versatile style safeties, just like Jermaine Bondren. But after getting great field position now, Arizona State up against it on a third down. They've run it in the last two third downs. We'll see what Mike Norvell dials up here. Strong back shoulder throw, he's got it. Inside the five, near the pylon. They'll say he stepped out at the three. Symptoms from a concussion in the Oregon State game kept him out a week ago. Boy, are they happy to have him back. Yeah, I told you earlier that 74% of his catches have gone for first downs or touchdowns. He is such a mismatch on the outside, and Taylor Kelly throws that back shoulder fade as well as anybody in the game, and you can tell why it's such an advantage having that big 6'3 receiver on the outside. 21 yards on the game, first and goal. Richard, the setback in motion. Kelly runs towards the boundary. Up and over and very close. They'll say inside the one-yard line. Reggie Gilbert tripped him up, 84. It's where the ball is, and the ball was in that left arm. A little shy. Foster comes back into the game as the setback. He'll take it. Boy, he runs right into a stone wall in red. Ball pops free late, but the whistle had blown. There was nowhere to go in the middle of that defense. Tevis was the man coming out of the pile with the ball, but forward progress had been ruled down, and there's an injured Arizona State offensive lineman there in the end zone. I believe that's Nick Kelly, the junior center. And that's a critical position, as everyone knows. Our Fox Game of the Week is presented by Kay Jewelers. Concern for the health of Nick Kelly, the starting center, forced to leave the game. Stephen McCray, 77, has moved in. Go back up at both guard as well as at center. DJ Foster remains the setback. And the exchange is always difficult inside the five-yard line anyways. Back up center in the ball game. Let's see how he and Taylor Kelly do here. Kelly keeps it. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think he got no. it. Arizona's defense just got underneath, which is what you're taught to do in goal line circumstances. I think that play call was derived from the fact that McCray was in the game and it was inside the one yard line. The easiest way to make sure that center quarterback exchange is to call a quarterback sneak. 
Kelly unable to get into the end zone here, and they're going to go for yeah, it. Well, you know, four down. Get the ball after a 25-yard punt in that position, 28 yards away. You want to take advantage of it. Here's Foster again, dotting the aisle. He'll take it, and he's stuffed behind the line. The Wildcats get it done and do wake up, wake up the echoes of the Desert Swarm. Parker Zellers, 93, the nose, got his nose up and under. Low man wins. Arizona was lower than Arizona State. Fox College Football is sponsored by Bud Light, who reminds fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. And by AT&T. Rethink possible. Tim Brando, Joel Klatt, Jenny Taft here in Tucson, Arizona at Arizona Stadium. Sun Devils were stoned after a first and goal from the three. And the Wildcats take over. Nick Wilson. And there hasn't been much against that interior wall of Arizona State's defense either so far today. This is a perfect time as a quarterback to change up the snap count and use a hard cadence, try to get five free extra yards. Got another Sun Devil injured here. That's Antonio Longino. Longino. Yeah. Let's take a look at what happened uh, while they tend to Longino and what happened in that sequence, beginning with third down. I want you to watch Scooby Wright, number 33, and trust me, you're going to know where he's at because this is the quarterback sneak. There's <laughs> number 33, <laughs> up and over the oh, top. Man. That's why he's one of the best in America. And then on fourth down, it was just effort and getting low and leverage, and Arizona gets the huge stop. Talk about a throwback. He is that. Yep, he absolutely is. He is the standard hybrid of the new wave of college football at linebacker. Solomon's pass is airmailed, intended for Devontae Neal. And let's get a game break back in Los Angeles from Cole Wright. Thank you, Tim. Let's go back to Pasadena at the Rose Bowl. Stanford, UCLA. Seven zip Bruins until this. Ramond Wright, nifty one-yard run. That squared the affair. Cardinals and Bruins deadlocked at seven. Tim and Joel, we'll send it back to you. All right, Cole, thank you. It's amazing how this season road teams have done so well in the Pac-12, but they have. On this out pattern, Austin Hill has it. That's good for a first down. I mean, what an important game that is. If Stanford is able to beat the Bruins, then this game here is for the South Division Championship, and the winner will be heading to Santa Clara for the Pac-12 Championship next Friday night right here on Fox. Loose ball. Solomon lost it again. It's recovered and taken in for the touchdown. Demetrius Carey. Mix up there with Solomon and Wilson. Ball popped free. Anu tried to get on top of it. We do have a flag down, so we'll have to check on that. But Cherry was right there to pick it up, and he's another one of those guys that were, were part of the changes made defensively by Todd Graham. Moving on the field is a fumble and a touchdown by Arizona State. During the It was just the exchange, and they were trying to move the launch point. Wilson was heading over to the right side. That's always on the quarterback. The running back always has to have his eyes forward so that he can see the blocking holes that the offensive line is providing, and the quarterback's responsibility is to get that exchange off cleanly. Solomon puts it on the ground, and now two defensive scores in this ball game. One for each team. What a start. Great presence of mind by Cherry to pick it up. Those meat cleaver hands of his are pretty good. A lot of guys would have just jumped on top of it. We're tied. Seven seven our score with just under six minutes remaining here in the opening quarter. As you see Solomon and Wilson 
consoling one another after the turnover that led to the touchdown. In fact, it was the touchdown. Demetrius Cherry taking it in. Two high-powered offenses we talked about, right? Yeah, but, you know, it's exactly <laughs> as I was explaining yeah. to him. The yeah. pressure, the enormity of a game like this, the emotions, it's always more difficult for the offense to execute. And now we've seen both quarterbacks, one a senior, one a freshman, put the ball on the turf today, and it wound up in the end zone for the opposition. These guys have got to settle down. It's a, quite an art to get your heart rate to settle itself down, take a deep breath, and get into the details of the system. Alex Garud will boot it away all the way through the end zone for the touchback. Well, who's in the top four in the college football playoff? It's brought to us by Burger King. And uh, not any movement at the top. A little bit in the back, and some believe that the hold that, uh, that Alabama has has been lessened to some degree mm -hmm. of late. And certainly Mississippi State in the most uh, perilous of positions. I, I would agree, especially for the fact that they're the only team of the four jockeying for that fourth position that is not in line, at least at the moment, for a conference title or a share of it. Not even a division title in Mississippi State's case. That's, of course, if Alabama would win the Iron Bowl. And, of course, Mississippi State must navigate Hugh Freeze's uh, Rebels of Ole Miss who are smarting right now. Wilson pops it ahead to the 32-yard line. Longino able to come back from the nicks and bumps of a couple of plays ago to make the stop. It's second down and two. There's a little run pass look that Solomon loves to run in this offense. Devontae but, Neal on the receiving end, but a he, loss there. Mokiola, 28, the stop. And each offense runs it, so these defensive players so adept, they see it all spring, they see it all fall camp, and these defensive backs reading this out beautifully. Third and four. On the slant. Samaji Grant. The slant to Grant. And oh, does it pay off! Touchdown! If you're gonna jump a route, you better be able to make the play. Arizona State thought they were going to get a pick. And when they didn't, they gave up six. 69 yards, the sophomore from Compton, California. Fourteen to seven, our score. Demarius Randall. Outstanding defender has meant a lot to this Arizona State team. As defensive coordinator Keith Patterson would tell you, he was looking at jumping that, that pattern and getting a pick. He missed it by that much, and that much led to a 69-yard touchdown for Grant. The boot is to Lewis, and again, he won't be able to bring it up. Well, he, let's take a look at it, Tim, because Randall is coming up, and this is another pressure. Here's Randall, and they're going to be trying to pressure right here. He thinks he's got a beat on where this ball is going because Solomon never looked him off, but as he took off for the bat down there the pass batted down when you don't get it and you're in cover zero man to man there's no help behind you and grant with the nifty turn back gets it all the way into the end zone receivers with running back capability and beyond i mean you see it in all of these offenses at oregon at auburn you name it and uh, rich rod invented it dj foster in the backfield and he gallops ahead to the 21, maybe the 22-yard line. William Parks trips him up. Scooby Wright also over there. I love seeing Sparky back on the side of the helmet. I know Daryl Rogers was coaching here, too. They wore them, but it, I just see that old helmet. Maybe it's uh, my generation. I just think of the grand days of Frank Cush when they got the Fiesta Bowl rolling, and it was like the Arizona State Invitational. <laughs> DJ Foster towards the boundary. Beyond the 35-yard line to the 36. And a first down. Jared Tavis the stop. 
Great blocking on the outside, and then DJ Foster with some decisive running. Once he found his hole, he cut up north and south straight ahead and moved the chains for Arizona State. They last wore those helmets, by the way, here in 2010. Arizona State got the win. Richard forges ahead to the 41. I love what they're doing on this series because outside of one third down conversion to Jalen Strong, this offense has looked out of sorts all day long, and now they're establishing the run game, trying to calm everybody down. On second and six, Kelly keeps it. Ahead close to the first down. Paul Durant made the stop. And he almost got it. In fact, I believe he they're going to give it to yeah. him. That last uh, l lunge that he made. Yeah, it was a great cutback right at the last second. Got him about three extra yards and a first down. You know, he almost got Wally Pitt. Let's be honest. Berkovici had a pretty good run. And this young man's come back. There's no denying that he's the leader of this team. Taylor Kelly. On the play fake, going for the home run. Jalen Strong can't come down with it. Just a little overthrown. Jonathan McKnight was back there with him, but he was beaten by a couple of steps. And these are the ones that you want back so badly as a quarterback. Wide open, he's got two steps. Rarely are you going to get a wide receiver behind the defense by two or more steps. Kelly had him and was unable to convert with Jalen Strong. Second and ten. Lewis the setback, number one. He'll take it off the left side, wrapped up immediately by guess who? Scooby Wright. Scooby Wright, a finalist for the Lombardi, Nagurski, Bednarik, and not the Butkus. That makes no sense. It makes no sense. Uh, they left him off of that list. I think it's a clear omission that is wrong. He absolutely deserves to be on there. We've got an injured uh, Wildcat. I believe it's Turi Turi, 45, the strong side linebacker. We saw this team earlier in the year, and they were relying heavily on, on Wright. But I, I got to tell you, the two plays that, that I've seen that I remember most, one was his tackle for loss and takeaway of Mariota mm -hmm. earlier this year. It sealed the game. And, and the then, th then there was the other one here, and he was talking to us. Scooby was talking to us about it. He was upset with himself because he tripped up. He, he, he felt he should have taken yeah, it to the house. That was last year in the Oregon, Oregon game yeah. when, when Arizona beat Oregon. They beat him now two years in a row. But, yeah, he was upset about that. But this is a guy who's, you know, the only player in the country in the top 25 tackles, tackles for loss, sacks, forced fumbles. He's easily one of the premier defenders in our game. Third down, 11. Strong has been targeted a great deal already in this game by Kelly. He decides to tuck it, gets past midfield to about the 49, and dodges uh, the howitzer that was coming from Jared Tev Tevis will be credited with a stop. And Fourth Tevis and five. was just sitting there as a spy the entire time, and you see him come up, and there's nowhere for Kelly to go. At first, when he broke the pocket, you thought that maybe he was going to be able to escape for it, but now on fourth down, they're going to go for it. They are going for it on fourth down. You know, he's got 22 punts. Hey, he's going to yeah. punt this ball. Yeah, the old... Uh, not so quick, quick kick. And well executed by Kelly. Sort of brings back memories of uh, Spurrier and a few others that could kick the ball and maybe Doug Flutie. Guys that were multi-talented quarterbacks could also boot it. That's a 46-yarder that leaves Arizona back at the two-yard line. 
Let's get the three things we need to know when Arizona's got the football. Nick Wilson, first of all, the true freshman, is uh, first freshman in Arizona history to go for 1,000 yards. He's the key to their offense, that inside zone. Caleb Jones, fabulous receiver, and he leads a core of wide receivers that are, as a group, as good as any in the conference. And for Arizona State, we've already seen Antonio Longino leave the field. He needs to get back out there because their adjustments and the size that he brings to their defensive front has been so critical since they had 62 put on him by UCLA earlier in the season. Mm -hmm. Moments ago, Wilson and Solomon had a mix-up that led to the Demetrius Terry Cherry touchdown. They have not had good field position the entire game. That quick slant is caught by Caleb Jones. Part of what you just discussed, how athletically gifted he is. And he's ahead for nine. It'll be second and one. Yeah, at times they can have three different wide receivers on the field, all 6'3 and over 210 pounds. Wilson. I love that pass, though, that slant pass to get him outside of the shadow of their own goal line. And it was thrown low because he's going into the safety. That's excellent quarterback play from Solomon, understanding where the defender is and leading his wide receiver away from that defender. Backside pressure again. James Johnson, number 18, the redshirt freshman. Upland, California, and boy, did he up in Solomon. And Solomon had no idea that he was coming. A blitz from his safety position. Solomon had no idea, and now way behind the chains. Uh, they bring the house. They really do. They give up some big plays at times as a result. That pass is thrown low and away, intended for Caleb. Caleb Jones, it's third down and 18 coming up. This is a dangerous situation, and I would expect Arizona State to again pressure, because the one thing that you want to do is force the quarterback to throw the ball short and underneath, rely on your defenders to go up and rally and make the tackle. But the last thing you want to do is have Solomon and afford him the time to get the ball all the way down the field for a conversion. Pressure again. Curl pattern to Devontae Neal. And that at least improves their field position circumstances before the exchange on the punt. Demarius Randall, number three, who was burned on that Samaji Grant touchdown, made the tackle. Fourth down. Middlebrooks is back deep for the Riggleman punt. This one's low and gets past Middlebrooks, unable to field it. A little better than the 25-yarder that he had a bit earlier. Well, tomorrow, a second helping of the biggest rivalries in college football is coming your way. Notre Dame takes on USC. It all continues at noon Eastern here on Fox and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Got also the Apple Cup on oh, there, Kansas, oh, Kansas State. What a day of college uh, football. Great uh, smorgasbord on our family of networks including Fox Sports One. I'm not sitting in a hotel room for that one. Well, guess what? I'll be chilling at Chateau Brando Good watching you. you and Wani at work. Okay? Good for you. <laughs> well, we'll be having a Thanksgiving tailgate at the Chateau. DJ Foster, the lone setback with Taylor Kelly. Out to the 30-yard line. A remarkable quarter. These two high-octane offensive teams have shown flashes, but the defenses won the day by scoring 14 of the 21 points thus far. Territorial Cup at stake. As we open the second quarter, Arizona with the lead 14 to seven. Joel Cloud alongside Tim Brando. There is no denying the emotions of this matchup. A very underrated national rivalry between these two teams. And what I love about it is that you're sensing the urgency from both teams understanding the importance of this ball game. And they're playing at a high level defensively and you're starting to get the sense that the offenses are settling down now and getting into the rhythm of this territorial cup. Foster takes it ahead for a couple as you look at our game summary. Well, look at the rushing yardage in Arizona at minus 24. 
Of course, quarterback sacks in the collegiate game add to the rushing totals, which skews that to some extent. But they've been stoned by Arizona State up front. Here's Foster. That rollout pass a little low for Demarie Nelson. William Parks made the stop, and let's go downstairs to Jenny Taft. Two different looks on the sideline when it comes to both quarterbacks. When it comes to Taylor Kelly, he's been extremely active on the sideline, constantly warming up. He's been talking to Foster. Looks like he's trying to get his team going. When it comes to Anu Solomon, he's been sitting on the bench. He's talked to Coach Rodriguez. Coach Rodriguez said he doesn't affect the freshman to be affected by the importance of this game still yet to be seen. Anu Solomon is a cool customer. He's nicknamed Mr. Chill by Rich Rod. Foster will take the handoff and tries to bounce it outside on the first down play. And guess who was there? Yeah. <laughs> Scooby Wright, number 33. 126 tackles coming into the game in the first quarter alone. He had five tackles. He'll be credited with at least a half a tackle there. Three solos and a couple for losses in that first quarter. Including a forced fumble that wound up in the end zone. So he's making his presence felt in this ball game and has made it really difficult on Arizona State to establish their run game with DJ Foster. Foster and Lewis now flank Kelly. Kelly with time going for the home run pitch and catch again. This one is reeled in. Jalen Strong has got it. That one was almost overthrown like the first as Strong heads to the sidelines. That right arm down by his side. What an effort from Jalen Strong. Well, it's all out. Absolutely all out. Wow. 50 yards, the hookup. And they're tending to him on the sidelines now. There's that, that quick package again to uh, Frederick Gamage. He's ahead for about four. Let's go back to that throw. And he again beats Jonathan McKnight, number six. McKnight, a senior from River Ridge, Louisiana. Wait, he, he acted as if he thought he had help. I think he, he expected yeah. it. You're absolutely yeah. right. Jordan Grandin was a safety over there, number 26. Called it a gain of five, so second down and five. Straight design run for Kelly. Taylor Kelly down to the three. Anytime the quarterback runs, you're going to be able to block everybody in the defensive front. That's just how the math works out. The designed run, they pull a guard, get a couple lead blockers in there, and it's a first down inside the five-yard line. Now this is as nimble as we've seen Taylor Kelly since coming back from the injury. Yeah, Todd Graham made no bones about the fact that he was going to be the starter even after Berkovici had performed so well. Easy to understand why with uh, the multi- dimensions that he brings to the position here off bootleg action across the body and incomplete two receivers in really the same location Martinez 88 and strong 21 yeah strong had broken his route off he was headed to the corner of the end zone but as Kaylee Kelly excuse me continued to head towards the sidelines he went back towards the goalpost and that's why there was two Sun Devils in the same spot Arizona State had a first and goal at the three, failed to score. And otherwise, we'd be tied at this point. DeAndre Lewis is in the backfield again. Play fake to him. Back of the end zone. Oh. Hands of Velcro. Touchdown. Jalen is some strong. It doesn't get better than that. I mean, I, I know it's not Odell Beckham at a different level, but that was some one-handed grab. Zane Gonzalez for the extra point. And wasn't he holding his right shoulder just a couple of he moments was ago? on that drive after the long pass. <laughs> he was holding his right shoulder. 
Nothing wrong with Jalen Strong here. Number oh. 21 for six for the Sun Devils. Here's our Exodus trivia question. When was the last time Arizona and Arizona State played while both teams were ranked? Give that one some thought. I just know there hasn't been this much on the line for this game <laughs> in a, in a how, long time. How about ever? Yeah, I, I mean, I the, think stakes, you're right. the, the stakes were never as high as they are yeah, now. Arizona's never played in the last week of the season while a member of the Pac-12 conference or Pac-10 back in the day with a chance to win the conference. Garut's kick is returned by Johnson, and he's got it out to about the 30-yard line. How about those two catches in the last drive by Jalen Strong? Yeah, he came in a year ago as a junior college transfer, and early they knew he was physically so gifted, but he wasn't asserting himself. I would say he asserted himself on that last drive. That was the drive of Jalen Strong, a four-star prospect out of Pierce College. Caught 67 passes for Pierce for 1,200 yards, 15 touchdowns in just 10 games. So you know the type of explosiveness and ability that that he has this is the best starting point for Arizona on the day and we're talking the 30-yard line they've been beginning drives inside the five time and time again Solomon all kinds of time now decides to take it out of bounds and will at the 27-yard line and slow to get up yeah. to him on the sidelines still on a knee Fiso 58 chasing him down and Jalen Strong is going to go into the locker room as well and uh, be administered too. Last week against Utah, Anu Solomon was unable to finish the game with this foot injury that he's been dealing with, with for the last couple of weeks. Jesse Scroggins, a transfer from USC, was the sixth best quarterback in the country but had to go to junior college, now to Arizona is the backup for Anu Solomon. Arizona 71 total yards in the game and 69 on the one play to Samaji Grant. Solomon's pass is caught. That's Caleb Jones off the curl action to the 39-yard line. Caleb Jones, 60 catches on the year, over 800 yards. He's one of these guys, 6'3", 215 pounds out of Austin, Texas, a transfer from the University of Texas. He had to sit out last year, but the coaches loved the way that he came every single day and prepared like he was playing. Let them know that he was going to be quite a star this season, which he has been. Third down, less than a yard. It's Wilson. That's a first down to the 48-yard line. Mokiolo makes the stop. This offensive line so experienced. The left tackle, number 68, Mickey Bacchus, making his 50th start today. Fabian Zebele on the other side, also so experienced. But the glue of that offensive line is their center, Steven Garola. 6'2", 286 pounds, makes all the calls. A wide receiver screen. It's taken to the 47-yard line. Caught by Trey Griffey, red shirt sophomore, and yes, Papa and Grandpapa are here to watch this matchup for, for Trey today. And one of those 6'3 receivers I was talking about from Arizona. <laughs> yep. Such a deep core of receivers that they have. Second and a short five. They're, che they're checking the defense here. Todd Graham's checking the defense. They're going to play base defense, and they're out of their pressure. Wilson again. Burrows ahead to about uh, two yards away from the first down. Yard and a half, perhaps. Update from Pasadena. A field goal has given the Bruins a three-point lead. UCLA has the easiest path. They could uh, win that game and win the South and head for a rematch potentially against Oregon, obviously. Were they to win? If they drop that game, this one will give us the Pac-12 South Championship. Timeout's going to be taken by Arizona. Rich Rod wants to talk about it. Third down and a little less than two yards to go when we come back. We're tied at 14 in the desert. 
Pirates College Football is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. Well, the answer to our Exodus trivia question. Fans of both schools will certainly remember 1986. Chuck Cecil, the play that he made and what a difference it was. That was an undefeated team that Arizona State had at the time, coached by John Cooper. They would go on to play and win in the Rose Bowl, end up 10-1-1. The lone loss delivered by Arizona in 1986. Larry Smith's last season. Nick Wilson really stoned at the line of scrimmage. Nothing doing there. Neither team really able to do much between the tackles. You know, knowing Rich Rodriguez, he's thinking about going for this right now. I would kick this away at 14-14. Cooler heads prevail, and they're going to send the punting unit onto the field. These offensive coaches like Rich Rod, they, <laughs> they believe in their system yeah. so much, oh, yeah. and at this point in the field, the field position that they have, they, they love to go for it on fourth down, but this is the correct decision. We saw it already pay off Arizona State earlier in the game. Kyle Middlebrooks is waiting at his 10-yard line. Riggleman angles it away. It'll be fielded off the bounce. Really dangerous decision, but Middlebrooks made it. Caleb Jones was down there to uh, cover him up. Sun Devils will have it at the 10 when we come back. The most dynamic defensive player in the Pac-12, and perhaps the country. Everything's right when Scooby's on the field. Our Fox Game of the Week is presented by K Jewelers. Tim Brando, Joel Klatt, Jenny Taft were tied at 14 with 8-14 remaining in the first half. Pac-12 South could be at stake. The Territorial Cup is, always is, when these two get together. And D.J. Foster looks it out ahead for about four. Scooby right there to make the stop. And no Jalen Strong on the field. Uh, U.S. Army stat comparison. Should take a look at place selection for Arizona State to this point. Oh, option pitch to Foster, and he stopped at the 15-yard line. And an excellent job by the corner coming up, and he kept his outside arm free, and that's what's going to force this third down opportu uh, opportunity. If Jalen Strong is not going to be able to go, then D.J. Foster had better make some big plays. He's certainly capable on third and five. It's a delay of game. Yeah, passes to the back shoulder. Markers down. Ellis Jefferson, the intended receiver. No play. Delay of game. Offense. You know, I've got a hunch if Strong is not going to be able to play, he might have caught that touchdown with a separated shoulder. Uh, he, he might yeah, have. He clearly was injured on the long catch, caught the touchdown a couple of plays later using only his left hand. Right. Now not on the field. We'll get an update as soon as we can, but now a long third and ten here for Taylor Kelly in Arizona State. And they certainly could use Jalen Strong on third and ten from their own ten. That pass is incomplete. It was intended for Gary Chambers, 81. Did we get a late flag? I think we did. Parks was there covering. And may be the guilty party. I don't know that he knew where the ball was to make a play on it. Pass interference. Defense number 11. Yep. This is a 15 yard you're right, he never turned himself around, but that in and of itself is not a foul right. in college football. It's the contact right there, yeah. preventing the wide receiver from getting back to the ball. That's what draws the flag and a correct call. Excellent call by the back judge for a first down. Yeah, fundamentally, if you look back towards the ball, you might get a break on that from the officials. Here's D.J. Foster trying to run the stretch play to no avail. And Scooby Wright 
corrals him again. Let's go down to Jenny Taft for an update on Jalen Strong. Well, Strong had left for the locker room a few minutes ago, and he has been walking in and out. His shoulder pads are off. No visual injuries. He's not limping or anything, but he does have a towel on his head. And I want to remind everyone that he did struggle with those concussions. He's actually running back onto the sideline as I speak right now. So look for Strong to be back in the game. So pads are back on just as she's giving her report. Second and 12. Looking long. Overthrown for Cameron Smith, who is the second option after Jalen Strong. And there you see those pads back on number 21. You know, he's going to do everything in his power to be on the field all day long. You know, from experience, let me just tell you, they take your pads off. He was, he was looking at that shoulder. And you have to let the medicine sit in yeah. and take effect before you put your pads back on. And now he looks like he's ready to go and ready to rock. And they're going to need him. Another third down here for Taylor Kelly. The last time they got bailed out by a flag by the back judge. Third and 12. Kelly trying to keep it alive. And on the comeback pass, it's incomplete intended for Ellis Jefferson. Great coverage by Jonathan McKnight. And not just McKnight, because Kelly had nowhere to go with the ball from the start. Excellent coverage from Arizona for the duration of the play. Getting off the field now, forcing a punt from Arizona State. That's a quality defensive series for the Wildcats. Matt Hawk to boot it away. Got a lot of pressure, and it's deflected. Definitely blocked. At the 30-yard line is where they'll take over. It's Caleb Jones that got it. You talked about the lengthy athletes at wide receiver. They come in handy on special teams as well. That was actually Tellus Jones. Tellus Jones. Number one. Yeah, I, Caleb, the receiver. That's all right. Tellus, they look exactly the same. <laughs> Tellus is a lengthy athlete, but he comes in totally free. Number 74 there tries to get out to the left and get a hand on him, but he never did. And then he extends perfectly onto the outside of the foot and blocks that punt. What yeah. a break there for Arizona. Listen, my, my, my spotter. Brett Bender does a remarkable job. They're both number one, and their both last names are Jones. Yeah, what do you do? What do you do? <laughs> what do you do? Nick Wilson. Inside the 25 to the 23. Latu with the stop number 41. There's Tellus. We've seen both teams now score a defensive touchdown. We've seen both teams now be the beneficiary of great starting field position in the opponent's territory. ASU was not able to convert. Remember, stopped on fourth down on that series inside the five. We'll see how the Wildcats do with their good fortune. Second down and three. Here comes the pressure. Nick Wilson burrows ahead. Looks to be about a yard shy of the first down. Salamo Fiso to stop, number 58, in the middle of that defense for Arizona State. It's so important when you're facing a team that loves to bring pressure that you get into third down and short situations because that allows you to continue to run the football if you want. And you have a dual way go as a play caller for the offense. Third and one. Quick screen out to Samaji Grant. He can't get to the 20. Stop shy. Lloyd Carrington made one heck of a tackle. The junior from Dallas, Texas, saved the first down. He's on the block, and there he is, and he gets a hold of him and never lets go. What an effort from the corner, Lloyd Carrington. And then he got a little help from his friends, James Johnson, number 18, there to polish up. And it's fourth and inches. Hey, Rich Rod may want to talk about it. He is. Just got the linesman's attention, and we'll take a timeout. A little bit going on today, wouldn't you say? There's a lot going on. <laughs> In college football, amazing. Yeah. Fox College Football is sponsored by Dawn of the Planet of the Apes on Blu-ray and Digital HD Tuesday. By Scott Trade, our passion is to power yours. 
and by Lowe's. Lowe's never stop improving. Tim Brando, Joel Clapp, Jenny Taft on hand in Tucson. 88th renewal, territorial cup at stake and possibly a Pac-12 South championship. And even if that doesn't happen, a good chance the winner of this game could get a Fiesta Bowl berth. So much at stake here. Fourth and inches. And again, in this offense, they go shotgun. And there's the handoff to Wilson, and he pops it. Nick Wilson, touchdown. Boy, this freshman from Fresno has been unbelievable. When Jones Grigsby got hurt early in the season, they said, you know what, this kid's got some real talent. He's probably the closest thing that we've seen to Kadeem Carey. That's some high praise, my friend. Yes, it is. What a game. You're looking at Nick Wilson, who really knows how to get to the edge. And, you know, a lot of purists would say, gosh, you don't line up under center on fourth and inches. Well, when you've got plays like that, it doesn't matter so much, does it? When you got a kid that can make <laughs> one guy miss in the backfield, <laughs> Arizona State took themselves out of the play with a blitz. Then he found the edge and it was over. Scouring kicks it away. DeAndre Lewis back deep. And he'll let it go for the touchback. It was just a small little adjustment. Watch as Nick Wilson jumps to the left side of the offense. And what that's going to do is force the safety to come across. Then what happens is Arizona State blitzes here, and then there's no one on the right side of the field. Nick Wilson's got to make one guy miss. He does so. That's Marcus Hardison in the backfield, number one. And now it's over because there's no one left to contain the true freshman. Arizona's got the lead on the basis of a 69-yard touchdown on third down, a 21-yard touchdown on fourth down, and a defensive touchdown that came on a third and nine very early in the game. Opportunistic. Demario Richard is in the backfield behind Kelly, and he'll take it. Look at him go. Demario into Arizona territory. Boy, and he's such a good young back, but it was the block of Christian Westerman, number 55, that really sold it. It was five or six yards down the field. Westerman with an excellent block to spring the 17-year-old Richard. 27 yards on the carry, first down. Richard again on the cutback. Stopped by Tremaine Bondurant, 21, coming up from free safety. Yeah, I mean, th that's just an excellent block. There, I mean, there he is just taking him completely out of the play, and Richard has an easy cutback lane and picks up a big first down and gets the ball into Arizona territory. Yeah. What a block there, 6'4", 305, excellent offensive lineman, and he's got a great attitude and disposition, perfect for an offensive guard. It's been the strength of this team, according to Mike Norvell, their offensive coordinator, all year, their offensive front. Strong is in motion, Foster in the backfield. Kelly under duress and down at the 47. Let's get a game break, back to Los Angeles, Cole Wright. Thanks, Tim. Back in Pasadena, Stanford, UCLA, Kevin Hogan and Michael Rector playing a nice, friendly game of pitch and catch. 22-yard touchdown. It made it 14-10 Cardinal. It's now 20-10 before the half. Cardinal hoping to keep UCLA out of the Pac-12 title game. All right, Cole, thank you. Here, third down and 14 facing Arizona State. DeAndre Lewis, the setback. Trips, wide receiver set to the top of your screen strong at the very top. Kelly has to duck. The pressure was coming. Tevis, the bandit. The former walk-on, local product, right in the middle of the field. He's gonna come right next to the center, and Taylor Kelly has no chance. 
went to Canyon Del Oro High School right here about five miles from the campus of the University of Arizona. What a play from the safety. What a high punt on fourth and 24. Fair catch called for, and it's bobbled and recovered by Arizona State. Neal lost it. It was so very high. I mean, it could have brought down icicles, that punt. And it's Mitchell Fraboni, the long snapper, that got on top of it. How about that? The punt was incredibly high. And he was looking right back into the sun. You can tell by the shadows. I was on the field before the game. The sun is low. The Help. punt returners and, and receivers were trying to catch passes with it in the sun. You can tell right there. That's exactly what he was looking up at. How about your long snapper being the first to get down there? Well, you know, you can't have anybody hit the long snapper. That's right. So that's the guy that Gotta can be release down there. first, yep. you know, via the rules. A lot of those long snappers are always the first one down the field. Foster in the backfield. Play fake to him. Slant over the middle for strong incomplete. Thrown high. You got to figure if you're T Taylor Kelly, you're saying, I'm going to throw it up and let my guy go get it. Jonathan McNabb was with him. You know, you can get a little greedy knowing that you've got such a great athlete. I'm sure Kelly thought that that was a catchable <laughs> ball, but just out of the reach of his great wide receiver. Somewhere Jack Tatum is saying, when, when did he get my stick of that number 21? When, <laughs> That's right. When did he get that? <laughs> I even knew Jack Tatum. Nice job. <laughs> now, now I'm with you. Demario Richard. Demario. Down to the seven. Boy, this kid is tough, too, isn't he? True freshman, Palmdale, California. Turns 18 next week. I mean, he is really something special. And the, they glow about his ability to pick up and pass protection, yeah. too. Takes a great, strong lower body to do that. That's what he has. He's got a great football mind for a young kid. But now on third down, you got to think that this is Taylor Kelly and Jalen Strong's time. He's top of the screen. Safety valve, Richard DeMario goes again. Well, they got 50 yards of hidden yardage on the punt, and then the freshman took over from there. And a blown coverage, and you got to give Taylor... Kelly a lot of credit because he recognized it immediately got the ball out to his true freshman for an easy touchdown what a series there picking up the touchdown after the muff punt from Arizona how's that for momentum to close the half for the visitors we're tied at 21 unpack them they look alike don't they Coming up on the Dell Halftime, how is UCLA faring as they try and wrap up the Pac-12 South? The SEC East on the line, Missouri in the driver's seat, but struggling at home. Plus, undefeated Marshall in an overtime thriller. Tim Joel, we'll see you at the break. Rob, we can't wait. Petros Papadakis in there, along with Dave Wanstead. I just love all the storylines nationally. Oh. You know, that Marshall team probably needs Boise State to lose yep. to Utah State. Because the champion, highest ranked champion from the group of five, right. you know, the non-power five conferences gets an automatic bid into the and access how, bowls. How about Arkansas maybe blowing it up for Missouri in the how East? They've, they've delivered eight straight quarters coming in of shutout football. They've been they've been sensational, and Georgia somewhere has got their <laughs> Arkansas pom-poms. Yes, indeed. Waving in the air. Groot's kick is returned by Tyrell Johnson. Stopped at the 24-yard line, and again, as was mentioned by Rob, uh, the Dell halftime report with uh, Petros and Dave Wanstead coming up, and that thriller in overtime for Marshall to be discussed. And, you know, it's been said a couple of times how important this game is, and I've asked everyone from both schools when was the last time it mattered this much to both schools simultaneously, and they've all said, well, in the modern era, no other time. Yeah, never. In fact... You got to go back to 1975 since both of these teams entered the game with nine wins each. But even in that game, you know, they weren't playing no. each for a, a championship, right. you know, depending on what happens with UCLA. We're talking Western Athletic Conference days. Exactly. As before they uh, joined the then Pac-8, becoming the Pac-10.
which is now the Conference of Champion Pac-12. An amazing first half. All kinds of entertainment and special teams. Offenses scoring. The two defenses scored both touchdowns to begin our game. Let's get you to Los Angeles for the Dell Halftime Report. Here's Rob Stone. Three things you need to know about our first half that could provide the Pac-12 South champion. Subi sacks lead to Scooby snacks and touchdowns. Arizona's got a quick cat and Samaji Grant on the slant, taking advantage of a defender jumping a route. And Jalen, boy, does he have Velcro hands. That was the difference for both teams. We had everything from blocked punts. We had, we had touchdowns from defenses. And offense is taking advantage of other teams' risk-reward defenses. This is what I love about, the, you know, the cat and mouse game yeah. of offense and defense is that when when you're in offense and you can catch the defense in a blitz, you're going to have such an advantage. And Arizona has been able to catch Arizona State in those blitzes a couple of different times for big plays and for touchdowns. Uh, one of them, Randall tried to jump up and bat the ball down. He wasn't able to do it. And now, you know, we got a 21-21 ball game here with what looks to be with Stanford leading UCLA, at least at this point, Tim. Indeed. One half for the Pac-12 South title. Tyrell Johnson will take a knee, and let's go down to Jenny Tapp to talk with both coaches. Jenny? Coach Rodriguez was not happy with the way his team ended that half. He said, we are not executing our game plan. We need to be better on offense and defense. Right now, he said, we're all over the place. Coach Graham coming back, he was actually pretty pleased with what he'd seen defensively. He's liking the way those young guys are stepping up. Unfortunately, an injury update, Mo Kiola will not be returning to the game. He's their spur. Their center, Kelly, is also continuing to be evaluated. Yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on that. And remember, uh, we touched on it earlier today and even in the pregame. Game. Jordan Simone, an outstanding safety who means a lot to their back end, also not available today. Nick Wilson on first down pops it right away. Beyond the 35 to the 39 yard line. That's the first down. And let's get our Geico first half stats. Joel, take a look at it. Well, I think the thing that's most surprising isn't even a number on here is the fact that Arizona averages over 80 plays per game, and they only ran 25 plays of offensive football in the first half. But the rush game at only 13 yards, Arizona State has done a heck of a job stopping the run. Wide receiver screen incomplete for Devontae Neal. A little high, but should have been caught. Second and 10 coming up. This Arizona State defense, you already mentioned it. Lyle Mokiola, the quarterback of the defense, number 28, the spur linebacker, out. He's not in the game. Antonio Longino, not in the game. Simone, not in the game. Lots of backups out there, some inexperienced players in a big situation of 30 minutes of football with a championship on the line. Procedure, the preliminary indication. False start. Offense, number one, second down. Mark uh, Duddy is our referee today. Caleb Jones, the guilty party, that backs him up. You know, if you're an offensive coach and you understand those injuries have taken place, you're going to run right at this defense with DJ Calhoun and Christian Sam, both true freshmen in, playing at linebacker right now. Pretty good day for Solomon. He has been cool back there, the redshirt freshman. Wilson forges ahead for about three, maybe four. Tashon Smallwood, number 90, another freshman from Fresno, California, makes the stop. He's a big one out of Central High School in Fresno. They go tempo on the slant, and it's caught by Austin Hill. It's a first down. And they went with tempo and got Arizona State in a busted coverage. Nobody covering the wide receiver in the slot and an easy first down for Arizona. 15 yards the pickup, and it's first down 10. Caleb Jones, the angular sophomore, the bottom of your screen, and it's Wilson again, cutting it back up ahead for about two yards, second and eight. Longino back in the game after leaving at the later stages of the second quarter. And here was that play I was talking about, the busted coverage, nobody on Hill. This is a guy who was a Bolitnikov finalist two years ago. Last year, he tore up his knee before the year, missed the season. He's come back, had a very strong season this year for Arizona. But that's what happens when you leave wide receivers open. 
A pass is caught by Hill again. We talked about the injuries. He's fought through them every year he's been here. That's 10 yards and another first down. What a selfless player, you know, too. He's a Blitnikov guy, has over 80 catches a couple of years ago. He comes in this year, and he's really a role player as a receiver. Only 38 grabs for 500 yards, but really works hard. Little delay, but Marcus Hardison made the stop. I think he, everyone thought he was down, but his knee didn't go down. And then ultimately, Smallwood had to corral him. Initially, it looked like Hardison had him wrapped up. Hardison playing so well, and he was never down. Hey, that's the Michael Dyer play there against Oregon in the national championship, remember? I do. That's what Michael, that put the game away for Auburn against Oregon in that BCS title game. Wide open. Richards. Down to the one. Demarius Randall saves the touchdown. Another busted coverage in Arizona's tempo right now is taking its toll on an inexperienced defense for Arizona State. First and goal, they go fast again. Quick as a cat. Touchdown. Wilson. I think what Jenny Taft told us, Rich Rod was not happy with the way the first half ended. The guys got the memo about the way the second half should begin. David Richards made a big play, didn't he? He absolutely did. This defense had a hard time getting set up, Tim. They found the big hole inside the five. Wilson in for the touchdown. Arizona up by seven. Fox College Football is sponsored by Dr. Pepper. Here's to a one-of-a-kind season. Dr. Pepper always one-of-a-kind by Chevrolet. Find new roads. And by New York Life Insurance Company. Four times Arizona has forged a touchdown lead. The first three times Arizona State managed to square the score. We shall see in the aftermath of that 75-yard nine-play drive culminated with the Nick Wilson touchdown, his seventh in the last three games. Scourin's boot headed for DeAndre Lewis deep. And again, he'll take a knee. You talked about the confusion the Sun Devils had defensively. Show it to me. Well, first and foremost, they're trying to substitute, and Arizona never substituted. So the officials were never going to hold the snap and allow the defense to go in there and get set. Therefore, Anu Solomon can snap the ball quickly. It almost looks like they were offside, to be honest with you. But that's how they get in there with an easy score. And assignments go out the window, and tempo takes precedence. So the offensive line just comes off. They all step in the left direction shoulder to shoulder and try to create a little bit of a wedge for their running back for a touchdown and that that kind of problem even existing for a team that also likes to practice fast and run a fast offense Arizona State Kelly's pass on the curl is complete to Jalen Strong it's ahead for a first down excuse me Cameron Smith Smith rather than strong on the receiving end Kim Smith had over 100 yards against Washington State last week when strong was unavailable with concussion symptoms very good young player from Capel, Texas. They're strong. Stopped at the 43-yard line ahead for about four, maybe five. Incredible series for him when he looked as though he had, at the very least, injured his shoulder badly. Came back in two plays later to make a one-handed grab. Then left the game, went to the locker room, came back out. You know he's sore after the the half second and four and it's dj foster cutting it back up should have forged enough forward progress to net a first down at the 49 yard line as westerman again that was pulling around the edge i love the athleticism from christian westerman number 55 the left guard they use him in so many different ways. Great in pass protection. We've seen him out on the outside on the left side. That time pulling around the right and opening up the hole for a first down. Kelly. 
Out to DJ Foster. He specializes in this area of the field. All the way down to the 35-yard line. This guy is something special in space. And he almost didn't even get an opportunity because Taylor Kelly had to get away from a defender in the pocket. But making people miss, or as Coach Wanstad would say in the studio, as a running back, you got to be your own blocker at times. <laughs> and that's what D.J. Foster was on that last uh, play. You think he was happy for LaShawn McCoy yesterday, Wanstad? Yeah, I know he was. Yeah, you bet he was. Wide receiver screen to Cameron Smith. He lost the ball at the 34-35 yard line. I think they're going to say, the officials are saying forward progress stopped at the 34. I think he was even ruling that it was down, yeah. which is very important because down by down contact, by contact right. would be reviewable. Right. Yep, correction. Right. They're ruling forward progress was stopped. Right. That is not reviewable. Right. So even if this is a definitive look as far as Kim Smith not being down, not reviewable, they ruled that that forward progress was stopped. It was Scooby Wright that corralled him. Crowd is reacting as they're replaying it on their big screen. This pass is caught. Inside the 30 and down to the 28-yard line is Gamage, number 89. I'll just reiterate, that's, that is a non-reviewable play. Rich Rodriguez was talking to the official on the opposite sideline, and that's what he was told and why we didn't get a review. Third down and four. Kelly's pass incomplete. Tremendous suffocating defense by Scooby Wright. Hammered Chambers, who was the intended receiver. And it's fourth and four. I thought Chambers drifted just a little bit. It was zone defense, and a quarterback always expects his wide receiver to stop and give him a stationary target. And at the last second, I thought Chambers just ever so slightly moved to his left. And Taylor Kelly was hoping that he would bank away and come back to the free space. The Groza semifinalist, Zane Gonzalez from 45, and he hooks it. So after three different occasions falling behind by a score and always answering, this time, Gonzalez, who's been really solid through his career, overcooked it. Fox College Football is sponsored by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you gotta get DirecTV. Not far from our Los Angeles studios in Pasadena, there's some action to talk about. Cole Wright has it in this game break. Cole? That there is, Tim. Stanford and UCLA. The Cardinal threatening Ramon Wright. Two-yard scamper, second touchdown of the day, capping a seven-play, 80-yard drive. 28-10, Stanford rolling. Condoleezza Rice elated. Tim and Joe. How about this for elation? Nick Wilson pops it all the way for the touchdown. Gowron's extra point is good. I know Rich Rod doesn't want the public address system to be announcing the score from the Rose Bowl, but my guess is the better than 56,000 partisan have their iPads, their social network working, and it is looking good in the Zona Zoo right now. The Fox Game of the Week is presented by K Jewelers. 35-21 our score. Nick Wilson with a 72-yard scamper. Look at those numbers. Incredible. 16 carries, 149 today. DeAndre Lewis will bring it out three yards deep. Pummeled at the 17-yard line. 
And let's take a look at some outstanding blocking to Free Wilson here. Well, first of all, you have to understand that the inside zone is what they always want to run. And now they're going to come and they're going to hit Arizona State on the outside, the center poles. That's a stretch zone play. Nick Wilson bounces it out. And how about the block from the slot receiver, Samaji Grant, number 10. We've seen with the touchdown earlier in the day. That's an excellent block and a selfless play from the wide receiver who's had a heck of a day. Against a really good, strong safety. Demarius Randall. Demario Richard is in the backfield. He pops it to the 24-yard line, about two yards shy of a first down. Cody Epolito, 57, makes the stop. 6'2", redshirt sophomore from Paradise Valley, Arizona. Second and three. Richard again. Oh, nice move. Oh. Nice move and a first down. Well, you look at these two teams, Joel, and it's almost like watching mirror images of one another. As you unpack them statistically, you look at their personnel and the different groupings they have, remarkably similar. You know, outside of the experienced offensive line for Arizona, both of these teams very young and inexperienced. Arizona State more so, and the young player, Demario Richard, showing you why he's got such a bright future in Tempe. They play fake it to him. They go Foster, who does get a nice block from Cameron Smith. That helps uh, spring him to the 42 and a nine-yard gain. And in that other game of great significance, Cole Wright back in Los Angeles keeps us posted when there are changes. But right now, Stanford with a healthy lead. And a reminder, if it does happen to be Oregon and Arizona, the last two times they've played, Rich Rod's gotten the better of them. That was a 10-yard pickup and a first down. Play fake is to Richard. They're looking for Jalen Strong Long. And the marker comes down. Probably not a bad idea by Jarvis McCall because it was going to be a touchdown if he doesn't interfere. I thought that Strong baited him into that contact. Pass interference. Defense number 29. 15 this is the instincts or football IQ I'm talking about because Strong ever so slightly led up on his Held route. Up a little bit, yeah. And because McCall was looking back at the football and not at the wide receiver, his full speed ran into Jalen Strong and drew the flag. He that type of savvy yeah. is why Jalen Strong is just so good. Deked him just a little, He huh? did. First down from the 43 after the penalty. Richard again. Maybe a half yard. Scooby Wright, so quick. Making the stop. Again, the standings to illustrate the importance of this game. The winner of this game only needs help from Stanford to be the Pac-12 South representative in the championship game a week from tonight in Santa Clara. It'll be destination Santa Clara for the next few years for the Pac-12 championship. DeAndre Lewis is now in the backfield, second and nine. Kelly, backside pressure. And a sack for Pettinato, number 90. He had the scoop and score for a touchdown against Utah last week. Here's Pettinato around the right side. He slow plays it just a bit off of the snap of the football, and that's what allows him to beat the tackle, Jameel Douglas. Third and 12. Kelly under duress again and wrapped up by Tremaine Bondurant. This defense has been so good the last eight weeks. They haven't given up over 28 points outside of a win against Washington State in a game in which they were up 52-17 at one point. 
and they're showing why that speed and athleticism on the outside has been so dynamic today. Arizona will have it at their own 17 when we come back. Well, you know what they say about the desert. It may be a dry heat, but guess what? It's heat nevertheless. Six sacks for the Wildcats today. Our game brought to you by Kate Jewelers. Here's an update from the Arizona State sideline, our Jenny Taft. Coach Graham has been focusing on the defense throughout the third quarter. He's making sure everyone is on the same page, pulling individual guys aside. He's barely been watching what's happening on the field, focusing only on the defense. Really been the bane of his existence all season long because of all that youth that uh, Joel touched on a little earlier. Wilson. Solomon was taking it off the fake to Wilson and is uh, ahead for about a yard and a half, two yards perhaps. And Solomon hasn't had to be great today. He's only thrown the ball 13 times. No, He's that's 10 right. of 13 for 162 yards. The defense and the running game has what carried Arizona to the point that they're at with a 35-21 lead here late in the third quarter. It's a very important series for Todd Graham's defense. They need to stop right here, right now. They've been gashed by Wilson between the tackles. Here comes the corner cat blitz. Passes out and completed to Austin Hill. Right now, Arizona continues to spread out the defense. So they've got two right wide receivers on each side. The fundamental spread set. Now Hill's going to come down and be a third wide receiver on this side. But what that allows you to do is Solomon sees all the pressure and can just go opposite. On third and one again, they blitz. And running into it for the first down is Wilson. Longino makes the stop. Yeah, you really have to feel for Graham's plight to some extent without Simone, who means so much ter in terms of run support. Mokiola's just his anchor. He's not out there. Wilson is stopped by Salamo Fiso, who's certainly a leader for this team at middle linebacker, the redshirt sophomore. But this is such a young group to be burdened with these injuries with so much at stake in the second half. Very, very difficult for Graham and his defensive coordinator, Keith Patterson. On the slant, just shy of the first down, Caleb Jones, about two yards shy of the first. And Graham is trying everything. I mean, he is emptying the playbook right now. He calls the defenses on the sidelines, has the wristbands on. He checks late. You can see him signaling in. He's called just about every combination of coverage and blitz that you can oh, for a defense. How good was that last lunge by Wilson? Not a lot there, but the last lunge netted the first down, but we have a marker down. by Caleb Jones. Now you take away a first down, Rich Rod is so upset, and he, he's tough during the game, and he's a tough love head coach. Caleb is going to get an earful of it after that. Had nothing to do with the point of attack in the play. I mean, what a huge penalty. It's oh. moving the change. You're going to be about the 40-yard line. It's a momentum killer. It is a momentum killer, and it gives this Arizona State defense some life and some time to think about what they want to call. Now, bringing in a substitution for Todd Graham. I think a lot of the fans are just learning that the first down was taken away. That slant is incomplete. Trey Griffey was the intended receiver. Let's take a look again at the uh, the penalty. Trey Griffey is guilty um, up at the top. That's Jones, I beg your pardon. It was guilty of it. I don't know. Pretty close. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a play on in, in my book. I don't agree with the call. Yeah, neither do I. Middlebrooks decides to leave it alone. And it rolls dead inside the 15, so a break indeed in special teams. Middlebrook's not fielding it. 35-21, Arizona State with the ball, and Mike Burke.
Vukovici is in the game at quarterback. He hands to Richard. And again, incredible penetration, this time from Jeff Worthy, number 55. Now, you would think because burkovici has got a great arm and they need to pass the ball a little bit more now. That may have something to do with it. If there's anything else at work, I'm sure Jenny Taft will do the best she can to find out for us. But a quarterback change made to Berkovici, who had a solid campaign when he came in for the injured Kelly earlier this year. Second down. Pass was intended for Cody Cole, tight end number 83. Here's what he's fighting as a quarterback to come in cold off the bench. You've just been standing the whole game. It's not a cold day, but you're not in the rhythm of the game. Taylor Kelly now sitting there watching his backup playing this ball game. Finding the rhythm of the game is the most difficult part for a quarterback who enters in the second half. Now, remember, this guy's had significant snaps this year. They wouldn't have been in this position without his help. Third and 13. Flushed. And a great pass. That's the dart thrown to D.J. Foster for a first down. I want to go back to the second down play because Berkovici threw the corner, but Jalen Strong, that number one target, watch how open he was in the middle of the field right there, wide open. Arizona completely misses Jalen Strong on the hash, and it was an incomplete ball, but Berkovici avenges himself and converts on third down. First and 10 from the 25. Richard, again, just manages a couple of yards when he could have been caught for a loss. Ippolito with the tackle. Let's get a game break from Los Angeles and Cole Wright. Thank you, Tim. Let's peek back in on Stanford UCLA. 28-10 Cardinal. Bruins looking to make some hay. And the field goal attempt from 48 yards out is a fake. Jerry Neuheisel looking for the end zone. He's picked. Jordan Richard says, I'll take this and you'll take that. Still 28-10 at the end of three. Tim and Joel. Wow. I'm surprised that Jim Moore, with that much time, would resort to that. Here, Demario Richard in the backfield. A quarterback change with Berkovici, and that pass caught by Foster, stopped in his tracks by William Parks. What an open field tackle. The art of tackling in today's game is so much more difficult because of the spread offenses and the amount of athletes on the field. William Parks with a great one there, and now a big third down for Arizona. Sun Devils facing now a third down and 11. Remember, Jalen Strong was open on the hash earlier. Let's see if there's a seam route in Berkovici. Pressure from up the middle. And that pass is thrown away. Looked to be another mix-up in terms of the pass pattern being run, but Berkovici was also dealing with a lot of heat. Are you surprised at the move to go to Burko at this point? You know, he played so well when Taylor Kelly was injured for those three games. He beat USC on the road. I know they lost to UCLA, but he is the passing threat, and they are a more dynamic team throwing the football with Berkovici in there. But it is awfully difficult, Tim, to come in there cold and try to get the rhythm of the game. Well, that was a dangerous move by Neal to field that off the bounce the way he did, particularly given the muff earlier. We'll be back. Thirty five twenty one Arizona with the lead and the ball coming back the other way Solomon off the play fake gets it out to the twenty six yard line oh, Demarius positive, Randall the stop and some positive yards after dropping the ball in the backfield yeah. so <laughs> making something out of nothing there is the redshirt freshman quarterback Anu Solomon 176 yards on the day a touchdown and he's just had to be okay, you know, because yeah. they've been so good running the football. You know, he and Nick Wilson had that problem that led to the fumble recovery and touchdown for Demetrius Cherry. I mean, without the mistakes, we're talking about an exemplary performance, really, in every phase of the game for Arizona today. My friend, with what's happening in Pasadena, 
That's 15 minutes and 14 points separating Arizona from a Pac-12 South title. In the committee era of college football, we just don't know. But let me throw this out to my partner. LSU won a national championship with two losses yeah. in 2007. They yeah. were number seven when they played in the SEC championship. <laughs> if this team goes on to win today at number 11 and then beats Oregon a second time, could they possibly crack the top four? Well, Any shot I, at all? I think it would be very difficult. I, I, I really do. But they're going to have the tough task of beating Arizona State, who is a wonderful fourth quarter team. In fact, seventh in the country, averaging over 10 points per game in the fourth am. quarter. You know how your global play-by-play -play partner is. I could not resist I, I throwing understand. out that potential. Listen, I, a little I hypothetical understand. for you. Nick Wilson is in the backfield on third and 16. Quick screen and a great maneuver defensively by Armand Perry, number 13. The freshman from Las Vegas to undercut Samaji Grant, and it's a punt formation coming up. You're right, still a lot of business to be taken care of, but we're in we're the dawning of a new era in college football. Yeah, and we don't know how it's going to play We out. really don't. And, and that's why coaches all over the country, and especially these, these guys here, Todd Graham and Rich Rodriguez, have said we got to focus on what we can control, which is our own effort level, going out and paying attention to the details of our own system. Riggleman to punt it away with Middlebrooks again back deep. A great deal of shade now taking over this field, and Middlebrooks headed for the sidelines, decides to cut it back in, and gets quality field position for the Sun Devils at the 34-yard line. So far, the Arizona D has been up to the task, flying to the football, and when getting there, in not a very good humor. Fox College Football is sponsored by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. By Progressive, making it easy to bundle your home and car insurance. And by Ford. Beautiful things happen when you go further. Tim Brando, Joel Klatt, Jenny Taft here at Arizona Stadium. Things warming up, and just as Jenny was discussing earlier, Todd Graham spending his time with that young defense. He got him off the field early that time. And the Sun Devils offense sets up shop at their own 35-yard line. DeAndre Lewis is in the backfield. Nice pump fake and then holding of, of Strong taking place by McKnight. The pump fake really had McKnight in a real bad situation. And on that second move, he committed the foul. Uh, they're going to give it to Grandin rather than McKnight, but well, they were they, both They deep. misidentified it. Yeah. You know, it was definitely Jonathan McKnight, number six. There's the corner, and there you see in the, in the corner of your screen, there's the holding call on McKnight. And it's better to give up 15 yards than it is give up six points well, you know, as a corner at that point. Well, they have problems with those blue numerals on red jerseys, too. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's yeah. all right. <laughs> Smith has got it. Cameron Smith, a first down inside the 30 of Arizona. And you can see the difference Berkovici has, the zip on his passes. Yeah, look at the timing, too. A low snap, and yet he steps into this on rhythm, and he delivers just a strike. There you can see the power in his throwing motion through his lower half. Excellent throw. Wide receiver screen to Cameron Smith. Maybe a yard. That's about it. What a circuitous route not taken by Berkovici. The fact that they've got a, as good a backup as this young man is pretty amazing. Graduated. It's so in vogue for a guy that graduates who's still a backup to go and transfer somewhere else. Decided to stay at Arizona State. Still has another year of eligibility after this one. We'll get his shot to start next season. They go the opposite way with the bubble screen to Gamage. And this is exactly what I was talking about, the rhythm of the game. And it took him a series, but now you can tell that Berkovici's mind and body is going at the same speed of the game around him. And this series has looked so much better for Arizona State. From Pasadena, a field goal added. Hogan's had a huge afternoon. David Shaw's team may be doing in the Bruins yet again. 
meaning the winner of this game would represent the Pac-12 South if that score holds up. Third and two. Play fake, Berkovici's pass is caught, damaged, first down at the 12. What a throw on the run. Gamage all he had to do was turn around, and it was right in his lap. Timing was perfect from Berkovici. The throw was even better, right on target. Right when he turns around, it's right in his numbers. Excellent play. Richard. Demario. He gets away again. Did he get in? They're going to rule him down at the two. Epolito, 57, just enough of him to bring him to the ground. It's first and goal. We were talking about that strength in his lower body and the great burst, and he shows it there just short of the goal line when his right knee hit the turf. Now, this kid is a load. The previous play is now in the review. I thought they might review this after we took another look at that. Yeah, I thought he was down, though. I thought it was pretty obvious that um, all of his body really was down. It was a I tremendous It was a tremendous effort, but I thought he was down. I wouldn't be surprised if they changed the spot, however. Yeah. Because it looks like the knee touches. Well, boy, his knee never really touches. And Mike Pereira is in the studio. Mike Pereira, what are you seeing here? Well, I mean, I don't really think the knee touches, but I think the shoulder does. But uh, again, I don't think there's anything that proves conclusively when the body hits there that the ball has broken the plane. So I think they have to stay with it, uh, stay with the rule of being short and not a touchdown. Mike, will they change the spot of the ball based on that look right there that we're seeing from the two-yard line where the ball is to maybe inside the one? They might, Joel, since it's almost two yards, but really what they're checking to see here is, is it a touchdown or is it not? It's not like trying to judge whether he made the line the game or not. So normally, since there's not an out-of-bounds spot, you just leave it where it is. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. First down, Arizona State. Well, here's the big question. Was the catering good in our Los Angeles studios, Mike? <laughs> Uh, I wanted to get an answer. I really did. <laughs> we had a great Thanksgiving dinner. We did. Let's see what happens here. Richard Delone setback. First and goal. There it is. Touchdown, Cody Cole. Boy, you were spot on about the way this drive went for Berkovici. He he clearly was in rhythm. It's the rhythm that makes a quarterback, and he found it on that drive. Cody Cole, who's just been a scout teamer for the last couple of years as a red shirt and then a freshman. And Berkovici drives him the length of the field, and we've got a ball game for the Pac-12 South title, my friend. Mike Berkovici could have easily been back in Los Angeles transferring to USC. But here's a guy that said, you know what? I love Arizona State. I got a girlfriend that I love at Arizona State. I think I'm going to pitch and catch for the title at Arizona State. The Fox Game of the Week is presented by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K and Mike Berkovici feeling awfully good right now. Five of five for 40 yards and a touchdown on that drive. Mike Norvell turning to him and Todd Graham, his head coach there with him, seeing some results. Tyrell Johnson is back deep. Off the kick from Guru. And it's a touchback again. Let's get our Scott Trade game summary.
We've had a little bit of everything. Parker. Yeah, we have defensive touchdowns. We've had the muffed punt from Arizona, which led to a touchdown from Arizona State. We've had big plays out of the wide receivers and running backs. Now we've had a quarterback change, which leads to a touchdown. And all of this with a title at stake and the Territorial Cup. This, this has been sensational. These two teams, which deeply hate one another, have never played a game of this magnitude in their history. What a treat we're in for in the last 11-23. Arizona State became a university on December 5th of 1958. That was the birth date of Todd Graham. And uh, a lot of people upset from Arizona when they became a university. Adding to the fervor, Nick Wilson breaks free again. They cannot stop this guy. Perry with the saving tackle. He's going to get to 200 plus by the time the evening is done. That's a 24 yarder. He got to 200 last week against Utah. He's got a very stout front seven, including over 115 yards in the fourth quarter of that ball game, putting that game away against the Utes. So he's a guy that is used to carrying the ball in big moments in the fourth quarter. Nils Wilson stopped behind the line of scrimmage this time by Latu. What a play from Latu. One of the twins. They, they've, the Latus have uh, made an impact at Arizona State many times over. Sophomore from Rancho Cucamonga. Second down, 14. They've slowed down their pace, but they were so much better when they were playing with tempo. They haven't done anything in this slow style of offense that we're seeing in the last couple of series. Solomon, outside the tackle box, throws it away while getting some pressure. Tim, when they came out from halftime, they were going fast and playing like you would expect a Rich Rod offense to play. And in the last couple of series, it's almost like they've gone into a milk the clock mode but there's way too much time on the clock for you to milk the clock all the way to a victory. They need to pick up the tempo here offensively. Third and 14. Blitz coming from up the middle. And this pass really thrown quickly and incomplete intended for Devontae Neal. And you got to give this Arizona State defense a lot of credit. They've been covering very well in the back end in the last couple of series, forcing Anu Solomon to be perfect with his passes. This one well overthrown of the intended receiver. Devontae Neal, the transfer from Notre Dame. James Johnson did a great job in coverage there. Number 18 for Arizona State. Kyle Middlebrooks again is back deep at his 15. The Riggleman punt. Low again, and end over end, which means job well done. It will settle at the eight-yard line, and a lot of real estate now for Berkovici and the Sun Devils to cover as the sun comes down over the Catalina Mountains. Pictures and storytelling are many thanks to our crew, Mike Helling, our producer, Doug Freeman, director, up here in the booth, Brett Bender, our spotter, Joe Sullivan, Caden Fiverr, our broadcast associate, is here on first down, Arizona State trailing by a touchdown, ahead for about a yard, Reggie Gilbert the tackle, second down and nine coming up. What a marvelous holiday weekend we've had and a joy to be with this crew on Fox Sports all season long. And now what a joy it is to watch this game unfold before us. A backup quarterback in, backup center in. Stephon McRae still in for the injured Nick Kelly. And ASU has found a rhythm offensively. Berkovici's pass in tight. Intercepted Grandin at the 17. Berkovici missed the safety help. He never saw Grandin, who played this perfectly. They were 
trying to throw the wheel route, and you can tell his eyes never moved from the outside. And Jordan Grandin comes up with the biggest play of his life. This packed house can really feel it now. Westview High School, Avondale, Arizona. Grandin, a redshirt senior, one of 19 honored today. Sun Devils defense really has to get the job done now. Arizona with first down. Well, nice work on that play defensively by Hardison, number one, against Solomon. He lost yardage on the play. Hardison has been brilliant the last five weeks of this season. One of those players that they brought into the starting lineup after UCLA, and he's just been sensational, always in the backfield. Couple of interceptions, one against Notre Dame, the other last week against Washington State, and now he and his defense have to bail out his backup quarterback, Mike Berkovici. Second and 14. Pressure again. Solomon gets away. Bad wheel and all. His pass caught. Touchdown, Samaji Grant again. Samaji Grant caught a slant for 69 yards. This time, he came back to the ball, which is exactly what his freshman quarterback needed. Fox College Football is sponsored by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. Eight minutes and 31 seconds. Separating Arizona from a date potentially in the Pac-12 championship. UCLA down three scores against Stanford late. Samaji Grant with his second touchdown catch of the day. DeAndre Lewis is back deep for the scour and boot. Back to Los Angeles. Cole Wright with this Lowe's never stop improving game break. Thanks, Tim. And we're going back to Pasadena. Cardinal and Bruins. Brett Hundley exited this one, so enter Jerry Neuheisel. And on fourth and goal from the four, nothing doing. The uphill climb continues for the Bruins. It's currently 31-10 Stanford. Tim and Joel, back to you. Uh, all the precincts are getting close to reporting. And it would appear the winner of this game could be on its way to the Pac-12 title. In year three, that's Jeff Castile, the defensive coordinator. It's been dialing up some really outstanding plays for Rich Rod today. D.J. Foster in the backfield. Berkovici remains in at quarterback. That pass is caught at the 34-yard line by Cameron Smith. This defense of Castile scored a touchdown earlier, Joel. Set up that last score with an interception. And they've been playing outstanding football, especially against the run. But they have given up a couple of big plays and allowed Jalen Strong to get behind them a couple of times as far as their defensive secondary goes. That's what Arizona State's going to be looking for right now. Berkovici going long, too long, and this one's intercepted. Down at the 15 by Jarvis McCall. They have a marker down. Flags down at the line of scrimmage to hold everything. I think they're going to get a defensive holding here, and this is going to come back to Arizona State. Wow. How big is that? Those are two hands-to-the-face penalties. This one going against Parker Zeller's 93. The other one went against Caleb Jones, the wide receiver. He's the nose guard right over the yeah, center, and there's that left hand absolutely yeah. up in the face That's of Stephon call. McRae, number 77, the backup center. That's the correct call. 
It's the right call. It's just hard to throw that flag in that situation. They do it, and that's absolutely 100% the way to go. On first and 10, Foster dances and prances into Arizona territory to the 48. Now you have to make that break work in your favor if you're Arizona State. The tempo is what's worked for Berkovici. Now he's thrown a couple of picks. One of them comes off the board. The other set up an Arizona score. But at this point in time with 7.30 to play, you just got to sit back there and rip it as a quarterback. It's amnesia time oh, yeah. for Mike Berkovici. In traffic, traffic and down. Sacked a couple of yards behind the line of scrimmage. Scooby right again. Had a little bit of help. Jeff Worthy was in there helping him out. He transferred from Santa Ana College. But it was mostly Scooby with the pressure. Scooby right had a sack fumble in this game. And he sets up his defense with a huge third down opportunity here. Seven sacks on the day for this Arizona defense. Third and 11. Checking down underneath. Nice idea to Lewis. He gets it to the 45. That gives you a fourth and four. And a really smart play from Berkovici, knowing he's in four down territory, so he didn't force the ball down the field, but he got what he could out of the play. DeAndre Lewis out of the backfield, and now it's a much more manageable fourth down situation and at this point under seven minutes down two scores this one could be for the game Tim not taking a timeout wants to keep those in his pocket Todd Graham and I think Rich Rodriguez may do the favor for him himself and take the timeout he does we'll be back Six minutes remaining, and the season perhaps on the line for Arizona State. Rich Rod took the timeout. Castile has set up his defense. Berkovici in for Kelly, came in early third quarter. DJ Foster, Demario Richard, both in the game. Jalen Strong, the go-to receiver, is at the top of your screen. Blitz coming up the middle. Berkovich's pass is caught. It's Foster. It's a first down. And that was a great pick play. They put their two best players into the short side of the field. DJ Foster and Jalen Strong. And Strong essentially just pushed the defense off of him for about five yards. And Foster found the soft spot behind him for the conversion. That's an excellent play from Mike Norvell, the offensive coordinator. First and ten. Berkovici's pass right over the middle and caught. That's Chambers. First down at the 10. Maybe the 9. First and goal coming up. They haven't had much success here running the ball inside the 10-yard line during the course of the game, but they have had success towards the corner of the end zones with tight ends and slot receivers. DeAndre Lewis, the lone setback. Rolling right, Berkovici goes underneath, pass incomplete for Foster. Here's that fourth down conversion that kept Arizona State's chances alive. Yeah, here's what I was talking about. Watch Jalen Strong, number 21, top of your screen, and he's essentially just clearing everything out. Berkovici waits in his patient, even if he's going to take a hit from Tremaine Bondurant and delivers a strike for the conversion. That's just an excellent play. Second and goal from the nine. So far, I think he's uh, handled the amnesia pretty well the last few passes. Has. Yeah. yeah, you're right. This series has been impressive. Second and goal. Foster is in the slot. Berkovici throwing back of the end zone. Nelson, touchdown, Demarie. And we've got a marker down. Looks like offsides the preliminary indication. And they've got all three of their timeouts in their hip pocket. And exactly what I was talking about, the inline tight end, Demarie Nelson, 
going to the corner of the end zone. That has hurt Arizona all day long. Now two touchdowns from Berkovici, one to Cody Cole, and the other to the senior from Stockton, California, Demarie Nelson. A little bit of a high snap, but it was handled. And Nelson, former quarterback, makes the catch. All the precincts are now reporting. UCLA has gone down to Stanford yet again. So here's what's at stake for Rich Rodriguez and his counterpart, Todd Graham. Win and you're in Santa Clara next week. Opposite Oregon. Tyrell Johnson is back deep. You know, Tim, that fourth down play was huge on the last drive, but then it was this play to Chambers, number 81, that set him up for the touchdown. I love the route as he angled in towards the linebacker and then slipped on top of him in order to set him up inside the 10-yard line. And then Berkovici again with the patience to allow for his wide receiver to find the open spot. And Nelson grabs it in the corner of the end zone. Well, and let's not also forget that a pick was wiped out by yet again... You know, a hand to the face, face mask. This one committed by the nose tackle, Parker Zellers. But uh, the case is not closed, but Berkovici living to fight another day. Down just one score with 5.02 to play. And again, all three timeouts remaining for Arizona State. Can they handle a steady diet of Nick Wilson is now the question. Antonio Longino, 32, makes the stop of Wilson, who's had an incredible day running the football. Clearly the catalyst of this Arizona offense. Over 170 yards now, over seven a carry, three touchdowns for Nick Wilson. And the mark of a championship team is a team that can run the ball when everyone knows they have to run the ball. That's what we're seeing right here in this series. You're now watching the Pac-12 South Championship game. Wilson again trying to bounce outside. Hard to go wide against this defense. Great job again of stringing it out. Demarius Randall, number three, redshirt senior, Mesa Community College by way of Pensacola. Third and ten coming up. And he's able to be there because Marcus Hardison, number one, was again the first guy in the backfield, forcing Nick Wilson to go out and string that ball out to the right side where he didn't want to go. You're right, though. You know, they haven't been playing the fast-paced tempo, and they haven't been the same when they haven't gone that route. Third and ten. Wilson again. Stopped at the 30, a conservative series wow. for Arizona. They're going to give it right back. Christian Sam, number two, making the tackle. So, yeah, maybe they don't know the outcome at the Rose Bowl, but that series certainly looked like a team that was trying to protect a lead in a championship game. Uh, that's very surprising, especially with Arizona having three timeouts left. Arizona State. Middlebrooks takes it on the bounce at his 25. He's got a lot of space. He got one big block. And he takes it beyond the 40 to the 43-yard line. We have the South Championship being determined right now, and it doesn't get any bigger than this. Four of the nation's top team and a must-win game coming up. Championship hopes alive. The Big Ten Championship, the Pac-12 Championship presented by Dr. Pepper. Next Friday and next Saturday only on Fox and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Only team that Oregon's lost to this year is Arizona. Arizona has beaten them the last two times they've played. But right now... This Wildcats team has got to deal with the Sun Devils. Ballage and Foster in the backfield, first and 10 from their own 43. Lots of pressure coming up the middle of the pass, incomplete for Cameron Smith, but a blitz was coming. That was Tremaine Bondurant 
And he's coming off the edge, number 21, totally unblocked because Kalen Balaj, the true freshman, had to go inside. It was an all-out blitz, and yep. there was a middle linebacker there as well. Berkovici knew he had to get rid of the ball quickly. I would continue to pressure if I was Arizona. That's how they've had success today defensively. Balaj checks out. Richard back in. Second and ten. In the biggest moments of a game and a season, you need your best players to show up with their biggest moments. Scooby Wright, his third sack of the game. Well, you know, a nice job of him, too, to make certain not to get any of that face mask. He was up high, but he made absolutely certain, once momentum ended, not to let that arm go up at all on that face mask. Arizona State takes a timeout. Tim, third and long. Looks like 20. It's four down territory. It's four down time under three minutes. The quarterback has to understand that the under now, underneath route is available to him if he wants to cut this down to make the fourth down an easier conversion. Haven't heard Jalen Strong's name much in the second half, have we? DeAndre Lewis has checked into the game. Berkovici's pass is incomplete. And the flag does come down. Right in front of Rich Rodriguez. Tremaine Bondurant is going to be guilty. Rodriguez is in dip disbelief. judge is hearing a lot from Rich right now. Bondurant's called number 21. He's on the 45-yard line. There he is. He definitely puts his hands on the intended receiver. I don't know how you don't call that penalty you gotta if call you're that. the official. Yeah, you got to call that. You know, we, we've had a lot of debates over pass interference through the season. It is from crew to crew sometimes a little too subjective. I think they need to define it a little bit more, what creates an advantage, either offensively or defensively. That, that was a good call. First and ten. Berkovici's pass underneath to Foster, ahead for eight yards, maybe nine. Second and one coming up. And clock still not a factor with two timeouts. The clock stopping after a first down. It's offense as usual for Arizona State. For Arizona, the pressure is what has been so successful. Look for them to dial it up here. Jalen Strong at the bottom of your screen. Foster in motion. They go to Richard. He delivers the blow, doesn't he? Gets the first down. Gets those shoulders squared right into Jonathan McKnight. Boy, I love the way that young man runs. Turns 18, December the 2nd. First and 10 from the 38 of Arizona. And again, still plenty of time. Two timeouts to work with for the Sun Devils. Nothing doing this time for Cameron Smith. Parks right in his tracks. Second down and 12 coming up. I don't think it's time for a timeout just yet. You want to save those last two for under 30 seconds. So that's why Arizona State is letting it roll. Yeah. Why give Arizona's offense time provided you score? Berkovici's pass. Tipped. And almost intercepted. Intended for Gary Chambers. Eppolito almost picked that one off, number 57. And he's from Arizona, the local product. Just over his fingertips. The game of inches could have ended it right there. 
Third and 12. He looks pretty confident, doesn't he? Jalen Strong is going to be at the bottom of your screen. What he wouldn't give for a little man coverage here. Berkovici's pass for Strong. Incomplete. Well defended by McKnight. It's rare he doesn't bring one of those in. But I think McKnight got his arm in there. What coverage from McKnight in this day and age when anything gets called for pass interferences, he keeps up with them step for step and bats it away. Pac-12 South Championship on the line. A shot at Oregon. Potential move into the, dare we say, Final Four if you could win out. And now a timeout will be taken. Arizona in the 11 position when this game started. So much at stake. And Todd Graham will talk about it. Mike Norvell, is offensive coordinator, has been with him since he became a head coach at Tulsa. If you're thinking along with the offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator, the conversation right now for Arizona is, do we want to pressure and force a hot throw, the ball out of Berkovici's hands, and then trust our secondary to make an open field tackle? On the flip side, for Mike Norvell, this is when you've got to create a matchup. Every time that they've needed a big play, they put DJ Foster number eight and Jalen Strong number 21 on the same side of the field and let them create space for one another. And they're headed to the same side right now. Left side of the offense, top of your screen. Ball game, Pac-12 South Championship on the line on this play. They took one more shot at Jalen Strong, but they only brought three, had eight back in coverage, and really not a lot there for Berkovici. <laughs> it's a nice shot of Castile thanking his defenders. They're trying to go to Jalen Strong, and why wouldn't they? Berkovici didn't look any other direction, but the coverage was fantastic. Oh, well, we've got a flag coming down late, getting a little chippy after the victory formation was being given by Arizona. UCLA has lost yet again to Stanford, the mastery of David Shaw. Garola is one of his leaders. Rich Ride, as I said before, a tough love coach. Cannot stand that. Building a program from the ground up. He said to Greg Byrne, his athletic director, when he got the job after one year in exile, I never want my guys or this program to have to apologize about being great in football. You want to be great. And there is the Territorial Cup. It's a replica. The real one sits in the library at Arizona State. It's priceless, so they don't want it to be harmed. But they'll bring it to the library at Arizona at the end of this game. But he told Greg Byrne, he said, never want to have to apologize for being great at football. You can be great in every other area of your institution. Let's be proud of our football program. He'll get them to 10 wins with this victory today. And a shot at Oregon for a second time this year, having won the last two prior meetings. And some encroachment. Offside, defense number one. Five-yard penalty, second down. 
That's against Hardison. Very happy Scooby Wright. What a what a remarkable player and person he is. I'm going to remind you as it continues to get chippy that Boy, if you're Arizona, why are you yeah. even talking no, at you this shouldn't. point? You shouldn't uh, be. I mean, just get back in the huddle and take the victory. It's now third down and 22. And obviously, they want to use as much of this clock as possible to close it out with a knee on the ground. But the snap ends it. This is a program that's never been to a Rose Bowl. It's number 11, but with a bullet. Rich and his family can celebrate a year in coaching exile. And he's a proven winner everywhere he's been. Short of Michigan, and he didn't get a chance to see that final chapter. That was taken from him. There's Greg Byrne, the athletic director. He has the Territorial Cup. Jenny Taft is trying to corral Rich Rodriguez. Our Domino's stat tracker coming up. Remarkable victory. Solomon got it done. Wilson, how about Samaji Grant's big time plays? Huge game from Samaji Grant. The sophomore from Compton. Two touchdowns on four catches. They're rushing the field. And let's go down to Jenny Taft with Rich Rodriguez. Coach, I'm not sure if I'm the first one to tell you this, but you guys are heading to the Pac-12 championship. What does that say about right. this team? I'm so proud of our team, our seniors, our fans. It's been a long time, but the Wildcat Nation is happy tonight. This is your third year with the program. The Territorial Cup is coming back this program done for you over the past couple years? Well, I'm just really proud of everybody's associated the program. That's a really good football team we won. And listen to these fans. They're really enjoying it. So I'm tickled to death to be part of the Arizona football. Defensively, you had some huge plays, particularly from Scooby Wright. You forced ASU to get two quarterbacks in the game. What can you say about the way you performed defensively? Well, our defense kept hanging in there. I think Scooby Wright's the best defensive player and one of the best in the country. All right, well, you're heading to the championship. What's next from Arizona? Well, we're going to enjoy this. 24 hours, maybe 30 hours, but then we got to get ready for a great Oregon team. Congratulations. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Oh, by the way, if he can rattle the chains in Santa Clara and get another victory against Oregon, who among the top four could say they had two bigger wins than Arizona? I throw that out as a caveat for closure today in what became the Pac-12 South Championship right here on Fox.